We are anonymous. While there is certainly no shortage of bogus images and false claims surrounding the horrifically violent shooting in Las Vegas this weekend, there are some very serious inconsistencies that need addressing. A major one of those inconsistencies has to do with the myriad of reports of multiple shooters. While some of the claims have been proven false, a video, confirmed to be taken by a Las Vegas cab driver appears to capture and confirm the presence of multiple shooters. Curry Langdon, taxi driver, and resident of Las Vegas was in the taxi lane at Mandalay Bay when the shooting began. At first, Langdon didn't know what was going on, but when the shots began, she quickly realized and began filming. What she captured could be considered the most important evidence in regards to the reports of multiple shooters. In the video, shots begin to ring out. At first, the shots are far away and then, all of the sudden, they are right on top of her. This happens several times during the first two minutes of the video. At first glance, the two shooting distances sound like it could just be an echo. However, as the video progresses, we hear the distant shots originate first and with different patterns. As Langdon continues filming, the shooting becomes clear that it is coming from two different spots and Langdon even confirms this by saying, it is now coming from further away. Using multiple firing positions is a military tactic designed to throw off the enemy. A single firing position is relatively easy to pinpoint, so the use multiple points of fire is employed to blur the locator's image. While there were two windows busted out of Paddock's dual room suite, the distance between them does not seem far enough away from each other to produce the sounds we hear in the video. Also, it would have been quite the feat to run between both windows as fast as the firing is heard. Some of the exchanges happen almost instantly. It should is also a worthy point to consider the neighbor of the alleged shooter, a military veteran, called Michael Savage's radio show and proclaimed that there's no way Paddock did this. When the shooting became louder and more prevalent, Langdon jumped in her car and made a run for it. In the video, you can hear Langdon's taxi company discussing the chaos and then Langdon is informed to leave the area and stay clear of the strip. As she continues to film, the rounds continue to be heard for several minutes. As she leaves the front drive of Mandalay Bay, Langdon says, it seems like it's coming from up there. Just then, she turns the camera up and more rounds are fired off and a flickering light that could either be a strobe light or a muzzle flash is seen. What makes this strobe light effect particularly interesting is that it was filmed by multiple witnesses who claim it was gunfire. As the video progresses, Langdon turns from an observer and documentarian to a first responder. As the Winchester News Gazette reports, in speaking with Missy Morgan, a native Winchester resident and former resident of Las Vegas, she informed Winchester's News Gazette publisher, Lisa Friend, that she had a friend that was in the middle of all the tragic chaos. That person was Curry Langdon, video provider. She witnessed many people pouring into the streets from the targeted area. At one point she has passengers take shelter in her taxi, one with a broken leg asking for her to take them away from there, just anywhere away from the location. Along the way, one passenger is heard contacting family to let them know they are safe and okay. The same passenger is heard crying that there were dead bodies everywhere as they fled the concert location. After begging from the passengers to take them to several different locations on the strip, Langdon refuses and proceeds to take them to what she considers a safe place away from town. It is important to note that while this video does appear to confirm multiple shooters, there are a number of varying scenarios that could have produced these effects. The acoustics in a massive concrete city like Las Vegas can certainly play tricks on even the most astute audiophiles. While this may not exactly be a smoking gun, these videos certainly warrants further investigation and should not be overlooked as most of all this isn't adding up.
we advise all watching this video to be vigilant, do your own research. The mainstream media, is pushing a narrative and that narrative has already taken many turns. It's no secret that the mainstream media pushes narratives originating from many intelligence agencies such as the CIA. Likewise, it's also no secret the CIA is capable of pulling off such a event as they have planned and done so in the past to coerce public support for ID or agenda. The question becomes, if the mainstream media is telling the truth, which they do not have a shred of credibility for one to even consider they are, what was the purpose behind this terrible tragedy? Certainly politicians such as the criminal puppet, it was just a suicide, Hillary Clinton, wasted no time calling for gun control. These false flag events, which is certainly where much of the available info seems to lead you, always have a hidden agenda. Is this agenda to further divide America and or draw support for more gun control? Perhaps? Time will tell but the liars in government are already chomping at the bit on this despicable act they view as an opportunity to further take away our rights. To the victims of this tragedy, Anonymous wishes to express our deepest condolences to all that is affected by this and their families. Our hearts bleed with yours, no one should ever have to live with the effects of losing a loved one to these kind of circumstances. Here is a compilation of the videos in question as well as the radio broadcast from Michael Savage. We are Anonymous. We are Legion. We are the Revolution. Expect us. Some things are not adding up. So it's all over the news that uh, the shooter was on the 32nd floor. Yet I heard uh, a military veteran on Michael Savage, Savage Nation, talking about how we should have been able to see the light bursts coming from the rifle. We didn't see any light bursts coming from the 32nd floor, but you're about to see some light bursts coming from the 12th floor in three different videos. Make sure you watch all three of these and then tell me what you think is going on. Right there, baby. That's the one floor, fire. not the 32nd. One right more time. And notice the sound is off with the light because he's filming from a throw distance. This shit is... Hey, pause it. Pause it right, right after this. Pause it. Pause it, pause it. Pause it. Look right here. Everybody, look right here. This is not the 32nd floor. This is about the 12th, 13th floor of the building. They're saying he sh there's a shooter over here. He shot from these two windows, 32nd floor. Okay. Look up here where the video plays and look down here. See where you see the shooter. Leaning down on the crowd from an elevated position. CNN, mind you. There it is. Flash. Look at the flashes. Yeah, it's pretty definitive that those shots are coming from the 12th floor. So how is it that all of the news outlets are saying that this is a lone shooter that had 20-something rifles in his room and he was found dead before anybody could question him? David J. Harris Jr. here saying, something is not right. Line from KBET Radio in Las Vegas, who says he is a neighbor of the maniac who did the shooting. Rick on line nine, please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Savage, how are you today? Are you really a neighbor of this maniac? I, w I was, yes, sir. And I, I'm, I'm no longer in, in Mesquite anymore. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But I was his neighbor for about seven, eight months in Mesquite. And uh, I, I can tell you 100% that... They, they, this is not that kind of guy. Um, mm. I I was there working and seen him 
probably every other day on my way home. He used to sit with his garage open and sit out there in his driveway with his lawn chair right at the edge of the garage and, and, the, and the driveway. And he would wave all the time when I was going by. Really nice guy. There's a little uh, bar around the corner where they have uh, poker vending machines where you sit at the bar, you know? Mm-hmm. He used to go down there all the time and sit there and drink drink a few beers and a couple, have a few drinks and play that little vending that little vending slot machine uh, with the uh, video. Well, Rick, you're, ta- you're talking about a man who has just committed the greatest mass murder in American history, and you're making him sound like an ordinary guy who wasn't violent, didn't have any Nazi flags in the garage, uh, didn't seem crazy to you. Are you sure it was him? Uh, I'm 100% positive. I'm 100% positive. I know exactly who the guy is. I was in the Marine Corps, and I, I've, I've talked to this guy. First, we drank beer together, not just in passing, kind of sitting there playing games together. I had another guy work for me. His name was Steve. And we used to go to that same bar after work and, and, and have a few drinks and play video poker as well. And he would sit there, too, and we, we would just talk about nonsense stuff. And I told him that I was in the Marine Corps that talked about guns and all kinds of stuff. He, he never even told me that he owned a gun. Did he, ex- did he express any political opinions to you in those discussions? No, sir. No, sir. Not a thing. I, I, I mean, other than I told him, because I was wearing a Trump team shirt that said Trump team on it, and he was a Trump fan. But other than that, we didn't talk about it. <laughs> oh, don't let that get out. I know. <laughs> But and then the the uh, the acoustics. When you started talking about that, I was when I decided to call because I, I know I've been fired at with a seven point six two AK forty seven thousands of times, and I can tell you with the on a shadow of a doubt that that is a seven point six two round. There's no doubt in my mind. You can you can tell like your previous caller said by the thud of it at the end of it and the discharge rate. Uh, 22 fires at a lot faster velocity and a, and, and a r- more rapid recession than the seven. But but do you confirm that this was a belt a belt firing weapon? If not if belt, now no, you have to be careful when you define belt fed weapon because that could be a drum mag, it could be a, a belt fed from the side. I would say it was probably a 50 round drum magazine. Not an extended uh, mag. Not now are are are, are 50 round drum magazines legal? Uh, yes, they are. In some states, they are, and I frankly argued against private ownership of these before, and I was roundly attacked by individuals who called this program. I said, what, what the hell do you need a thing like that for? I'm, and, of course, the, st- the standard answer is we're going to hold off the U.S. government when it comes for us. But going back to your main point, Rick, and I need to confirm this. I'm just going to take you on your word because what you just said has not been heard on any network. It's going to be picked up and played elsewhere. I know that. And, you know, thanks to the Savage Nation, you are a man who was a former neighbor of this shooter, and you say he was an average Joe, never expressed any political opinions, um, no religious affiliation. Is that true? That's 100% true, yes, sir. And, and I, wow. I've already I've already talked to the Clark County Sheriff's Department this morning, called them and told them everything I know and, and everything that has, was said between me and the guy. Now, this was, this was spring. I was there in December of 2015 all the way until June of, of 2016. I was his neighbor for that entire time. In, in Mesquite? In Mesquite, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unbelievable. I, 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 multiple times. I've spoke with him multiple times. I have a... Now, I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but it, it don't sit right. I know this guy. I've, I've drank beer with this guy. It, all right, so, okay, you're not a conspiracy theorist. Ordinary guy doesn't snap. Something's wrong with the picture. Clean skin. Was he brainwashed? I don't. I, I don't think so. He was too smart of a guy. Too smart of a guy to be to be brainwashed. I think. You know that's all right. So wait, you don't go for conspiracy. He wasn't brainwashed. So what is your instinct telling you as a man who's been in combat? Obviously, you have very a very very heightened sense of reality. What is your instinct telling you? It's a setup. 
I know, and I know that sounds weird, but it's got to be a setup. What, what more? How does? Some- wow! Wait a minute. Hold on. I, I understand what you're saying. That's the body they found in the room, but he may not have been the shooter. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, how many movies have you seen with that exact same plot? I mean, oh my God! How does, it, how does it describe multiple people running through the crowd? What two people running through the crowd saying you're all going to die? Yes. And then all of a sudden. It's some average Joe guy who was an accountant who spent his days gambling at the video poker machine around the corner from his house drinking beer. Who, for all, all right? So, but if you were right, if you were writing the mystery novel, there are far more nefarious players involved. They did the shooting. They broke into his room and killed him and made him look like the shooter by laying guns in the room. Absolutely, and he he had been there since the twenty eighth of September. Yeah, and then, and then finally on the last day of the last show of the concert, he, he starts shooting people. I mean, it, it, you know, it doesn't add up. Why didn't he shoot people a long time ago? What did he do? Go out and enjoy his weekend, and then decide he was going to kill people? Like it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up to me, especially not this guy. You know, this, not this guy. So you're you're confirming in your mind a conspiracy theory. In your mind, we call it that. Call it what you want. That's the person they found in a room, but we don't know if he was the shooter. Is what you're saying? That's that's what I'm taking it as. I mean, prove to me he was the shooter. Show me the ballistics on his hands from him shooting and on his clothes from him him shooting all these shots. On top of that, watch the videos. AK-47, watch any video from when we were in Afghanistan. And an AK, the end of an AK-47 in the middle of the night lights up like a Christmas light with a flash. There's nothing the, coming out of that room. The, wait, there were no flashes coming out of the windows of the Mandalay? Watch the videos. I've, I've watched. I've watched them on Twitter and on YouTube a hundred times. And they're looking at the Mandalay Bay and all of and a lot of these uh, cell phones that people are holding. And you don't see a flash one coming out of that room. Well, did he have a flash suppressor on the end of his weapon? You wouldn't. I mean, there's still. I mean, you're thirty stories up in the middle of the night. You're going to see something. I mean, but why would he? And anyway, why would he need a flash suppressor if he was just randomly shooting into a crowd? What, what's that for? Over. Whoever was doing it knew that they would be caught eventually, but you're saying he didn't even do it. I, I mean, I'm not going to say he didn't do it, but it's just hard to believe. It's really hard to believe knowing the guy. That this All right, you, I want to repeat what, we're, what we've been talking about because I'm going to play this sound again tomorrow. Jim, we got to grab this. This caller, Rick, from KBET in Las Vegas, says he used to live next to the alleged shooter. He doesn't believe this alleged shooter did it for the reasons he described. And he's not given to conspiracy theories, but he thinks the whole thing was a setup and there are other individuals involved. Does that, does that accurately depict what you are saying, Rick? Yes, for the most part. I, I mean, it, it sounds harsh coming off like that because it makes me sound like a, <laughs> like a weirdo, you know, but there's <laughs> too much involved knowing the guy personally. So, all right, all right, weirdo. Don't worry about it, weirdo. This country takes weirdos to figure things out, but you're not a weirdo. You're an American patriot who's actually faced bullets flying at him from an AK-47. Rick, thanks for calling from Las Vegas. Well, we have to see. It's just to stay down, because every time people got up, they just start shooting, shooting. And it, and it wasn't like, blah, it was like, there's someone right there. How, how much? Their favorite word is me, 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 me. My daughter believes that she's better than most everyone else. My world revolves around me. Completely. That whole thing was a mischaracterization. You made me look horrible. Is this a mischaracterization of her? Uh, no. Next, Dr. Phil. I, I really hope that they get some sort of policy, not just Vegas, everywhere. Some kind of policy to where when this stuff happens... Why happens, we know there were multiple shooters at the Route 91 right Music Festival, which left 59 people dead and a half thousand others injured from automatic gunfire. But today we put the nail in the coffin. There is no way this was a random occurrence hatched by one psychopath. This was several psychopaths that planned this, and it took a whole team of people to execute it. For this, there's no doubt. And anything you hear from the mainstream media telling you about it is a complete lie. And what I'm about to show you will prove that. And all you have to do to grasp that fact is to just ask yourself why the mainstream media isn't showing you these facts. We'll start off easy and we'll work our way to what I consider the smoking gun of this whole debacle by the end of the video. 
But beforehand, we'll start with this guy, Rocky Palmero, who took a round of the pelvis at the concert that night, which was mere inches from being fatal for him. Like a ton of other witnesses, Rocky says he has no doubt there were multiple shooters at the concert that night, which, as we proved in the last video, is a definite fact. But what makes Rocky's claim so important is that he can prove it based on his injury by simply showing the trajectory of the entrance wound. According to his interview with TheBlast.com, he believes, quote, there were between three to five active shooters during the attack because as he ran from the initial gunfire, he describes bullets not only raining down, but flying horizontally at the crowd. I definitely do believe that there was uh, 100% more than one shooter. Um, uh, every other person that I've talked to that uh, did get, unfortunately, hit as well um have all said the same things when something's coming up and down or at least from a different angle um they're either going to hit the ground they're gonna um it, a lot of different things are going to happen when someone's shooting from a from a straight horizontal line it's just going to keep flying as soon as we heard a little break in it we knew we had to keep running uh we heard the gunfires uh approaching where we were they just started getting closer and closer and louder and louder and uh, I knew we were getting gunshots that were closer to us than where they originally started, and that's when we knew we, we had to run. I, I do believe that there were people inside of the venue that, that uh, uh, once the initial shooting started um, and everyone kind of panicked running everything, once the lights turned on on the stage and kind of lit everything up, it was, it was a lit target. Uh, every other night at the concert, everybody kind of exited right off Las Vegas Boulevard that was... That was standard, that was routine. You get out of the concert and you go down and go into the next casino. Well, at 10 o'clock, they, uh, they closed every exit on Las Vegas Boulevard, every single one. Um, they gated them all closed with chain link fences. Um, 10.08, the shooting started and it was, uh, we, we were pigs sitting in a corral. We, we only had one exit to go out of and I don't think one patient has been able to leave without giving another statement, myself included. Uh, as soon as I got discharged, there were two federal agents that wanted to get another uh, uh, audio statement when I left. Um, and I'm telling them the same thing I'm telling you. I, I definitely believe there were at least three to five shooters. And uh, 100%, there was not just one person shooting from the 32nd floor. Now, before moving on, I want to mention purely in the interest of disclosing all the information circling around this issue, that a video has been posted which purports to show Stephen Paddock, the alleged shooter, playing poker six days after he was supposed to have killed himself. Now, I can't substantiate whether or not this is Paddock. I mean, it looks like him. But I think you'd probably have to be the stupidest person on planet Earth to be playing poker in a Vegas casino mere days after your picture began to be smeared all over the world attached to a story about a Vegas poker player who shot 600 people. I find this pretty hard to believe. Uh, but I have to admit the guy does look very similar to Steven Paddock. It's really bizarre. Uh, but since I can't substantiate it, I'm not going to show it, because if it's just some guy in the video, I'd hate to have furthered an accusation against him for being involved in a situation that left 59 people dead when he was completely innocent. Uh, but for the record, the video is out there, and it is entirely possible. But anyways, moving on. Another strange occurrence I'll mention that happened over the weekend was when Paddock's Reno house was broken into. USA Today says the burglars broke in through the front door, but they don't know how many people were involved and they say nothing was taken or even damaged. Now the Reno police and FBI are together, quote, working to make sure no further incidents occur, end quote. So I don't want to speculate on what significance this bears on the case as a whole, if any, but it's worth noting as it's just another strange piece to this overall puzzle of corruption. And also this weekend it was stated by the Vegas police that Paddock shot a security guard in the hallway of the Mandalay Bay Hotel six minutes before he opened fire on the crowd out the window, which completely changes their story from earlier when they said the guard was reacting to the shooting. And to make matters even more convoluted, MGM Resorts then denied the police version of the story and said they have it all wrong when it comes to the timeline. So these people can't seem to keep their stories straight at all. As I said, this is the sloppiest cover-up in history. It was busted right out of the gate and it keeps getting more tattered every single string that's pulled. And yes, we can be sure it's a cover-up. Which brings us to what I think is the smoking gun here, or should I say one of the many smoking guns, maybe I'll call this the nail in the coffin, and that's what we find when we follow the money. This method 99 times out of 100 will lead to the guilty parties, and this is one of those cases for sure. 
So first we'll deal with the man who seems to be behind most of the planned turmoil festering within America, the infamous George Soros, who bought a put option on 1.35 million MGM shares, totaling over $42 million, several weeks before the massacre happened. So to explain in the most basic sense, because I'm no investor and this stuff confuses me, um, but a put option is an option to sell assets at an agreed price on or before a particular date. That's the actual definition. Uh, so in the world of investments, if you believe a stock's price is going to drop, you can buy a put option for an agreed price for the stock when selling it. So like if you have shares worth $100 each and you think they're going to drop in value, you can make a deal to sell them to your buyer for $80 each in two months from then. And if the price does in fact drop during that time to let's say 50 bucks a share, you'll have made 30 bucks a share above the market price. So when dealing with millions of shares at a time, betting against a stock in this way can make someone a massive profit, just as John Paulson did in 2007 when the market was crashing on everybody else. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. In short, betting against a stock is a way to make big profits, but you basically have to be a fortune teller to do it with any success. Unless, of course, you have inside information, which is illegal. Well, this is exactly what George Soros seems to have done eight weeks before the MGM shooting. The Securities and Exchange Commission has released his filings for August 2017, and they show he bet big against over a million shares in a company he didn't even own on his filings from four months prior, and that's the MGM shares. So you gotta ask yourself, how did George Soros, the man behind so much political, social, and economical corruption in the world, and a man so connected he can influence entire countries with a mere phone call, how did he know the MGM stock was going to fall? The common sense answer can only be because he knew the event was going to take place before it did. And if you're confused about this, take into consideration that MGM had just approved a $1 billion share repurchase program, which means the company itself goes around and buys up its own stocks, and in turn, because there's less shares available to the public, they go up in price. So why would Soros bet they were going to go down? What could he have possibly known that no one else did? Well, it turns out Soros wasn't the only one who knew, and this is where it gets even crazier. According to another SEC filing, we see that MGM CEO himself, James Murin, dropped 80% of his personal shares in MGM. We're talking millions upon millions of dollars here. This guy was involved in the repurchasing program himself, and he turns around right after and dumps almost all of his stock in the company. Any fool should know that this move would be seen as him working against his company by creating a panic when a CEO rids himself of the stocks for his own company. The only explanation would be that he thought the stock was going to take a nosedive. As the disobedient media aptly posits, quote, It needs to be asked why any profit-oriented CEO of any company would sell 80% of his personal stake in his own corporation, especially after he thought it was in the business's best interest to initiate a massive share repurchase program, which one would theoretically assume to reduce the number of shares in the company and increase the price of each share. Ceteris Paribus. Why would the individual with the most information about the company sell 80% of his shares immediately after the commencement of a program that, would, that most would consider positive for the stock? Shouldn't he want to hold on to his shares? Is there something he knew that others didn't that led to so much movement in such a little time? What a week! End quote. So there you have it. And it doesn't take much imagination to figure out what Mirren's scheme is here. It's the same as the Rothschilds after the Battle of Waterloo. He sells the shares as they're high. The shooting that was planned happens, and then the stocks drop, and then he buys them back for pennies on the dollar. And abracadabra, you just made millions in profits. For nothing. Well, there's a term for that. It's called insider trading. And it's illegal. But not as illegal as mass murder. And based on Soros and Murray's market activity, we can see, if nothing else, a full investigation of them both is completely warranted. And even more should be demanded by the American people. These moves are the smoking guns. These men profited off the murder and injuries of innocent people. And this was no accident. Soros put option and Murray's selling off of nearly all the shares he had in the very company he runs are both only possible if they knew the stock would drop for some otherwise unforeseen reason. And then bang, the biggest mass shooting in American history happens at the MGM. What are the chances? 
That's all I got for now. Share this video if you found it interesting, and don't forget to subscribe with the button below.